Hello guys, I am Sir Mars and you are watching Lectures ni Sir Mars. So today we are talking about the virtual work method for trusses. Before doing that, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet and hit the notification bell for video updates. So I have already discussed the virtual work method for beams and frames in the past videos. So in this video, we will only focus on applying the virtual work method to trusses. Let us review what a virtual work method is. So virtual work method is one of the methods used in determining deflections. As we can see, there are two general methods in determining deflections, the geometric methods and the work energy methods. So in geometric methods, we use the double integration method the area moment method, the conjugate beam method, and the three moment equation method. In work energy methods, we use the Castellanos theorem or the strain energy method and the virtual work method which is the subject of this video. Gian Bernoulli developed the virtual work method in 1717. Take note that the virtual work method is also called the unit load method. If you have watched my video entitled Virtual Work Method for Beams and Frames, you must have understood why the method is called this way. If you have not watched that video yet, you will still understand in a while why the virtual work method is called the unit load method. Take note that the concept used in the virtual work method came from the principle of work and energy, which states that the external work is equal to the internal work. That means that the work done by the external loads is equal to the work done by the internal loads. Later on, you will understand how this is applied to solve problems using the virtual work method. Virtual work method provides a general means of obtaining the displacement and slope at a point in a structure, be it a beam, a frame, or a truss. Again, in this video, we will only discuss the application of the virtual work method to a truss. The virtual work method determines the displacement of a truss joint when the truss is subjected to an external loading temperature change, or fabrication errors. In the virtual work method, a virtual system is to be created wherein a unit load is placed at the point and in the direction of the desired displacement. Another thing that I want you to remember is that in problems involving trusses, only the displacement of a truss joint is usually asked. What I mean is that truss problems do not usually ask slopes at any point of the truss. This is because we don't usually apply couple moments in trusses, which we typically do in determining slopes using the virtual work method. So how do we solve truss deflection problems using the virtual work method? So for example, we have a truss subjected to external loads P1 and P2, and we are asked to compute the deflection at any point of this truss. In this figure, for example, we are, we are to find the vertical deflection at joint B. So, this truss which is subjected to different external loads is what we call the real system. So, to solve the vertical deflection at joint B of this real system, we shall make another truss that is similar to the real truss and we'll call it the virtual system. The supports and members of this truss must be the same as the real system. The only difference is that the external loads in the real truss, which are the P1 and the P2, must not be included in the virtual system. Now, what we are going to do is, since we are asked to determine the vertical deflection at B, we will place a unit vertical load at the point where that deflection is asked, which is the joint B. Take note that in this figure, a load equal to 1, which is called the unit load, is applied downward at joint B. This means that we assume that the deflection at B will be downward. If this assumption is wrong, then the result must be negative. So let us now proceed to the sign conventions in the virtual work method for trusses. As I have said earlier, the deflection result may become positive or negative depending on your assumption. 
So if we assume a downward displacement on a joint of the truss, we should apply a downward vertical unit load. If we assume an upward displacement on a joint of the truss, we should apply an upward vertical unit load. There are times that we are asked the horizontal displacement of a joint of the truss. If that is the case, we shall either apply a leftward or a rightward unit load depending on how we assume the joint will go. So if we assume a rightward deflection of a joint, we apply a rightward unit load. And if we assume a leftward deflection of a joint, we use a leftward unit load. Now, if the result of computing deflection turns out positive, then the assumption you made is correct. If it turns out negative, then the assumption or the direction you assumed is incorrect. Example, if you were asked the horizontal displacement of a joint and assume the rightward displacement of that point, you will apply a rightward unit load. If the result of computing the displacement turns out to be positive, then your assumption is correct. That means it really is to the right. If it turns out negative, then the assumption you made is incorrect. It means that instead of going to the right, the deflection will go to the left. Now let us proceed to the work energy formula that we will use in computing the deflection of a truss subjected to external loading. So again, if for example we are asked to determine the vertical deflection of joint B of this real truss, the next thing we have to do is to create another truss which is called a virtual truss. Again, we are going to remove all the external loads such as the P1 and the P2 here and apply a unit load to the point where the deflection is asked. Again, take note of the assumption you made when you apply the unit load to the joint being asked. So in this case, we use a downward unit load it means we are assuming a downward deflection at joint B. This truss is subjected to external loading. So to solve this problem, the work energy equation to be used is 1 multiplied by delta is equal to the summation of lowercase n multiplied by the uppercase n multiplied by L divided by A multiplied by E. The 1 in this equation is the external virtual unit load acting on the truss joint in the stated direction of delta. So to be clear, this one here is actually the one that we applied in the virtual system. The lowercase letter n here is the internal virtual normal force in a truss member caused by the external virtual unit load. These values of n are the internal member forces in the virtual truss upon application of the unit load. The uppercase delta here is the external joint displacement caused by the real loads on the truss. This delta is the deflection that we need to compute and is what is asked in the problem. The uppercase letter N here is the internal normal force in a truss member caused by the real loads. These values of N are the internal member forces in the real truss based on the external loads applied. L here is the length of a member, A is the cross-sectional area of the member, and E is the modulus of elasticity of a member. Please take note that you will have to determine all values of lowercase n, uppercase n, L, a and E in all truss members because you need to get the summation of all this to compute the required deflection. So for you to quickly understand this formula, let me explain this to you. For sure you are familiar with the formula delta is equals to PL divided by AE. This formula is to compute the actual deformation of an actually loaded member. The delta here this is the lowercase delta, is the deformation. The P here is the internal actual load of the member. L is, of course, the length of the member. A is the area of cross-section of the member. E is the modulus of elasticity. Well, this is precisely the formula used in the formula marked above. Note that the N here is the internal normal force in the truss member 
caused by the real loads and is the same as the P in this formula. So to complete the formula, we just need to multiply the virtual external load 1 in here and the virtual internal load N on the other side, and voila, the formula is exactly the same. So why do we multiply the external virtual unit load in the left side and the internal virtual load on the right side? That is because of the principle of work and energy that we discussed earlier in this video. Let us now proceed to the work energy formula we should use in trusses subjected to temperature change. In some cases, truss members may change their length due to change in temperature. As we know, if the temperature increases, a material expands, and if the temperature decreases, the material contracts. So for the truss subjected to temperature change, the work energy formula to be used is 1 multiplied by delta is equals to the summation of N multiplied by alpha multiplied by delta T multiplied by L. Again, the 1 in here in this equation is the external virtual unit load acting on the truss joint in the stated direction of delta. So again, this 1 here is actually the 1, the unit load that we applied in the virtual system. The lowercase letter n is the virtual internal normal force in a truss member caused by the external virtual unit load. These values of n are the internal member forces in the virtual truss upon application of the unit load. The uppercase delta is the external joint displacement caused by the temperature change. This delta is the deflection that we need to compute and is what is asked in the problem. The alpha in here is the coefficient of thermal expansion of the member. Take note that each material has a constant alpha. Delta T is the change in temperature of the member. Take note that this value is positive if the temperature increases and negative if the temperature decreases. Finally, L is the length of the member. So for you to fully understand this formula, I am sure that you are familiar of the formula delta is equals to alpha delta T L, which is usually discussed in the strength of materials. This formula is used to determine the actual deformation of actually loaded members subjected to change in temperature. If we multiply the virtual external load 1 here and the virtual internal load N on the other side because of the principle of work of energy that we discussed earlier, then the formula is exactly equal to the formula presented above. Lastly, let us proceed to the work energy formula we should use in trusses subjected to fabrication errors in cumbers. Occasionally, errors in fabricating the lengths of the member of a truss may occur. Of course, we know what fabrication errors in length mean. It means a member may have been fabricated shorter or longer than its intended length. Also, in some cases, truss members may be slightly longer or shorter in order to give the truss a camber. Camber is often built into a bridge truss so that the bottom cord will curve upward by an amount equivalent to the downward deflection of the cord when subjected to the bridge total dead weight. So for you to imagine what a camber means, I, would, I need you to watch this animation. Let us consider a truss. This truss has no camber. So when we apply the load on the truss, it will deflect downward. However, if the truss members are slightly longer or shorter so that the bottom of the cord will curve upward, and will deflect a certain amount, then when the load is applied, the truss will deflect downward an amount equivalent to that deflection. So it will become straight despite the applied loading. It will have zero deflection. So if a truss member is shorter or longer than intended, the displacement of a truss joint from its expected position can be determined from the formula 1 multiplied by delta is equals to the summation of n multiplied by delta L. Again, 
The one in this equation is the external virtual unit load acting on the truss joint in the stated direction of delta. So again, this one here is the unit load that we applied in the virtual system. The lowercase letter n is the internal virtual normal force in a truss member caused by the external virtual unit load. These values of n are the internal member forces in a virtual truss upon application of the unit load. The uppercase delta is the external joint displacement caused by the fabrication errors. This delta is the deflection that we need to compute and is what is asked in the problem. Delta L here is the difference in length of the member from its intended size as caused by a fabrication error or camber. Take note that this value is positive if the final length is longer than its intended length and negative if the final length is shorter than its intended length. So again, for you to quickly understand this formula, I'm sure you know that in actually loaded members subjected to fabrication errors, the delta is equal to the delta L. This is exactly the formula used above, only that the left side is multiplied by 1 and the right side is multiplied by the virtual internal load N because of the principle of work of, and energy that we discussed earlier. I would like to emphasize that we can combine any of the two or three formulas discussed should combined situations be present in the problem. For example, we can combine the first and second formulas if the truss is subjected to both external loads and temperature change. So the formula will be 1 multiplied by delta is equal to the summation of N, N, L over A, E, which is the formula for the external load, plus summation of N, alpha, delta, T, L, which is the formula for the temperature change. Also, if the truss is subjected to all three cases, such as the truss is subjected to external loads, temperature change, fabrication errors, and camber, we can combine all three formulas such that the equation will become 1 multiplied by delta is equal to summation of NNL over AE, which is for the external load, summation of N alpha delta TL, which is for temperature change, plus summation of N delta L, which is for fabrication errors or camber. We shall solve example problems with combined situations later on. In the next video, we will solve this example problem 1. The link for this video is in the video description below. So see you guys in the next video.